Good morning, good morning. Oh no, I forgot my watch. Oh, I have a real <clears throat> routine I go through every morning as well. Of checking that I've got absolutely everything and I haven't got it. Anyway, it's 8.06 on Friday the something, 29th of April or something. I've got the paper here, hang on. Oh, I can't read it. Looks like the 28th of September. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so how are you, alright? <clears throat> oh, I just got back from two days at Pepper Pig World. Oh, exhausting. I mean, Pepper Pig World is not, you know, if you're a parent or a grandparent and you're going to Pepper Pig World, let me just say, let me just tell you a couple of things. Here we are. This is the sort of thing that you'd, you'd instantly go to a dental podcast for advice on visiting Pepper Pig World. First of all, it's not that far. It's about where I am near Canterbury. It's about two and a half hours. So from London, it'll be less. And so, you know, and the drive, it's all um, M3, A3, whatever. So it's pretty easy to get to. There's bags of parking. The Pe Peppa Pig World is a tiny part of the park. It's not, I mean, it's not a tiny part, but I mean, they have zones like they have a insect part of the park and a dinosaur part and etc. cetera, et cetera. So, um, so, and then there's the Peppa Pig part, and uh, the it's in a it's a, and the theme park is called Poulton's P O U L T O N S, and it's a, it's a proper theme park, you know. I mean, it's got some big rides on it, uh, as well as uh, lots and lots of tiny ones. So it's very good for kids, and uh, if your child or grandchild is under a meter tall with their shoes on, then they can get in for nothing. But you have to be over 1.1 1. Uh, 1 meters to ride some of the rides. So, um, but the best thing about it is that we went out of term time because my grandchildren are three and one, so they don't really have a term time. And uh, uh, you know, the place was, it wasn't empty. But I mean, you know, I know what Michael Jackson felt like with his own theme park because. You know, you could. Some of the rides we went on, and we were the only. My, my daughter and I were the only two on it. Uh, and it. And it was great fun. You know, you could sort of. You could get off, just walk around, and get on again. <laughs> so you could do everything as much as you liked. And for young children, there's there's a ton of rides. All you know, little dinosaurs jogging around, little farm tractors chugging around, all uh, uh, ladybirds going around in circles and all that. So it's you know. Anyway, I recommend it. I do recommend it. I would probably say, if you can possibly, don't go in high summer, and if you can possibly, don't go um, in the school holidays. I know it's difficult, but I think you'll have a, a much your, your your experience will be ten times better. So what's going on? Yeah, it's rained last night. It, uh, we've had a very dry April, so we've had a bit of rain last night. Actually, I've got this my other car, my posh car, of course my wife drives, has got this adaptive or reactive cruise control on it, so it's radar in everybody all the time, you know, it slows down. If the bloke in front of you slows down, it slows down. And and even better, if the bloke in front of you speeds up, it speeds up, probably faster than you would, which means you actually make quite good progress. But in the rain last night, it just all came up with all errors. In fact, we had a hint that something was wrong with it, because um, it tried to drive into the back of the car in front at 75 miles an hour. <laughs> that was the first clue we got that it was put on the on the verge of packing up. Uh, I don't suppose because you think radar, you think oh it's going to see through the rain and everything, but of course it doesn't. And uh, and after it tried to uh, kill us, it uh, then you know decided to. The little thing came up and said, "No, there's too much rain and spray for me to see anything." Well. Which is fair enough, I mean, but there was too much rain and spray for me to see anything either, so... Uh, I know what that bloke in the Tesla felt like when he slammed into the van, thinking, uh, you know, uh, I didn't see that. And the system said, no, I didn't see that either. So, what else? Oh, Bitcoin's up again, $1,300. You don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin, okay? I'm always, that's the first thing you say, $1,300? I can't afford that, do I have to buy a whole Bitcoin? No you don't, if you can buy five pounds worth of Bitcoin, just buy five pounds worth. And uh, mark my words, 
next year, this time, my son, you'll be in possession of £10 worth of Bitcoin. It's not to be construed as financial advice, just a reflection of what I'm doing at the moment. And uh, got a lot of faith in these new. You know, I sort of saw the rise of the internet and I saw the rise of faxes and email and Skype and VoIP and stuff like that. And so you see the rise of digital money and you think, yeah, yeah, that's going to go places. And, you know, being an early adopter really pays dividends. It didn't so much, you know, I mean, the first being one of the first few people to have a fax machine probably didn't mean much unless you're a solicitor. And being one of the first few people to have email probably, you know, meant that you had uh, access to much wider sources of advice and saved a few quid on stamps but really not you know didn't make you a fortune but being able to buy in early to the uh, the sort of the internet of money is does is seriously wealth making um, it's a bit like only having 21 million emails and being able to buy one and and you know in the surefire knowledge that anyone who wanted to send an email would have to buy one off you Anyway, so uh, yeah, so the American Securities and Exchange Commission has revived the uh, the idea that uh, in America they might create an exchange traded fund, a Bitcoin exchange traded fund, which is basically a, a blue chip regulated uh, way for institutions to buy Bitcoin. Uh, at the moment, they have rules prohibit them from speculating in anything that's not sold on an approved exchange. So. Once uh, this exchange traded fund gets going on the BATS exchange, then it, um, even if they <coughs> hedge one percent or or one tenth of one percent of the the total funds invested into it, then obviously that's going to bring hundreds of millions of dollars into Bitcoin, and uh, which is a bit prescient at the moment because it does seem that holding any sort of wealth in fiat, you know, government money is. Uh, uh, not the smartest thing to do. I mean, I don't know if you follow uh, American politics much, but Trump has just slashed taxes in the United States. He's literally, you know, the the highest rate taxpayers over there, I think, pay about just under 40%, 39 point something percent. And he's literally put them all down to 15%, you know, more or less. Um, if they uh, buy, if they set up what they call a pass-through entity, and we have pass-through entity. I've got a pass-through entity <laughs> in, in this country. And basically, it's a oh, hang on, junction of death, and there's a car coming. There we go. I have um do uh, my my uh, limited company, Dental Care Professionals Limited, is what uh, owns the surgery and what. And basically, I like many dentists just uh, take dividends from it. Uh, it's all entirely legal and above board. But basically, it's a way of just moving money from your surgery to the limited company to you in a way that every time you move it incurs less in the way of a taxable liability. And in America, you can have like literally a sorry, I cut myself shaving this morning, look. Know if it starts bleeding again, bloody painful. Yeah, so uh, so you, in America you can have a pass-through entity that uh, that literally takes your any you know like say you work for Merrill Lynch, you want to listen to Peter Schiff, Peter Schiff, S C H I W F. He's on YouTube and he does a podcast and he's probably PeterSchiff.com or something. Uh, he's an inveterate gold bug. He's he's always trying to sell gold and. You know, saying that gold and silver is gold and silver maintains its purchasing power and has done for the last five thousand years, which is true. And I'm I'm a bit worried about it retaining its purchasing power in the last ten years or so because um, everyone seems to be quite prepared to accept gold certificates, pieces of paper that say that they have a claim on some gold rather than the actual gold and there are there are something like 200 times more pieces of paper giving people a claim 
on an ounce of gold than there are actually ounces of gold. So I mean that just doesn't add up. So uh, so so I don't know whether gold, you know, physical metal gold may well retain its purchasing power, but all the time that there are idiots prepared to accept a, a piece of paper <coughs> saying that they own a piece of gold, but it's, you know, but don't you worry, someone else is looking after it, uh, <coughs> you know, don't you worry your pretty little head about where this actual ounce of gold is, or how many other people have got a piece of paper claiming that they own the same, the same ounce, then the actual price of gold is never going to go anywhere because they can print as many pieces of these papers as they like. So that's why I'm not a big fan of uh, preserving wealth in gold or silver or or even uh, palladium or tungsten or pork bellies or whatever other commodity. Um, but uh, yeah, so so Trump has given everybody a tax cut uh, without any sort of appreciable uh, uh, cuts in government spending because they never are. You know, I mean, governments never cut their spending and. Um, They've got this shutdown over there, where they have a they have in a, in a vain attempt to try <laughs> vain as in a uh, doomed to failure, rather than vain as in you know uh, arrogant or, or perhaps a bit of both. But they've got this vain attempt to try and um, to try and keep their budget deficit under control. They passed a bill that said that it can't just be raised indefinitely and infinitum, that uh, they, a figure has to be set on it, and that figure must be kept to. The idea being that this sort of uh, self-enforced financial discipline would mean that they uh, had, to, had to have a balanced budget at some point, they had to sort of balance the budget. But of course, what happens is that every two or three years, when this pre, you know, this pre-arranged figure uh, is is going to be exceeded, they then um, just raise it, and they raise it because in the meantime they haven't balanced the budget, and if they don't raise it, then nobody and the government payroll is going to get paid, and government itself is going to grind to a halt. Although, in fact, that's not actually how it works. What happens is all the government employees go on a two-week holiday, <clears throat> which is supposed to be unpaid, and then when the money comes in, like a month later, they just they just get it back as paid, paid holiday, <laughs> unofficial paid holiday. And then they close a few of the landmarks, you know, a few of the government-operated landmarks to so that the news media have got something to somewhere to take their cameras to show oh, the country's shutting down and then they interview a few pissed off tourists and then three weeks later everyone's got their money and they're all back at work you know but so what's what's the significance of this what he angry you're saying angry what's this why are you twittering on about american politics and the american economy well i think you know this wind is going to blow worldwide i think that you have to look at you know, Trump, Trump has actually done something with a capital S, and that's very rare in government. Normally, governments just twiddle, don't they? They just make changes around the edges of things. They're very timid. But he's, you know, he's just said, no, no, we'll have like 15% tax rate for companies, etc. So everyone is now going to be setting up an, an LLC, which is their equivalent of a PLC or a limited company, and there'll be instead of being employees, they'll be employed as consultants to their, their former employers and pay much less tax as a result. So that leaves them, and bearing in mind they've got a massive great black hole in the middle of the finances anyway, they owe $20 trillion, uh, you know, mainly to foreign bondholders, people who've bought sort of IOUs from the United States on the basis that the United States is most unlikely to renege on the debt and, and say, no, I'm not going to pay you back. So, it is physically, I mean, it's arithmetically impossible for them to pay this debt back. They, it's going to, that's why, in case you're wondering why, if you're like me and you lived through this period of massive interest rates in the 80s and you're wondering 
why we're now at zero percent, you know, or close to as, and in some countries, negative interest rates. And we have been for so long, you know, that my children never really seen a period of high inflation. They think 2% is high. And it's because, uh, it's not because the government's being kind to borrowers, you know, like you and me, it's because uh, the government's have borrowed so much <laughs> and spent it that they can't, they can only way they can afford the debt to service the debt is if they keep the base rate at about a quarter percent. And we're past the point of putting it back up again. We can't, you know, when I took out the loan for my surgery, my, the manager said to me, he said, I want to see a business plan. And he said, I want to see two uh, projections, or three. He said, I want to see your, your, your business plan with all your cash flow in it. And he said, I want to see another one with interest rates at 7%, borrow you with your borrowing at 7%. And another one with projecting that rates might rise to 12%. And I, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> 7%, 12%. <coughs> Short of a zombie apocalypse, we won't see those rates again in my lifetime. And, uh, but, you know, but that's the, you know, that's the thinking is a hangover from the days when inflation was 7, 12, 18%, you know, and they, they still. They're still, I don't know why they are, but they're still, I mean, I don't know. It's a sort of a financial stress test, isn't it? This is what they do to the banks. They say to the banks, we're going to stress test you, see how you cope under various scenarios. And so this 7 and 12% is just basically, it's just saying, I want you to carry out a couple of stress tests. So we did it and it was all okay, you know, because the bank borrowing is basically just, just you know, it's not a massive drain on the income of the surgery. It's the only loan. It's not like I'm borrowing to refurbish or redesign the surgeries or anything or build an extension. It's only like literally, a, it was a purchase loan and it was less than 200,000. So, but, um, but what you've got to do, you've got to put two and two together here. You know, even as a dentist, you've got to be smart, you know, and say, okay, well, which way is this wind blowing? Now, if you're in debt, as the Americans are and as we are as a country, and there's really only uh, sort of two or three ways you can get out of that debt, okay? One is to <clears throat> just write this letter to your debtors, <laughs> to your creditors, and say, very sorry, uh, you know, I've got, I've got no money. <laughs> I know I've given you all these IOUs, but they're worthless because I'm skin, all right? Now, that's no, no government's ever really done that. Plenty of people have, but, you know, governments can't really go bankrupt. And the reason they can't go bankrupt is because they have the ability to print money. They can't, you know, they, they've got the dollar printing presses. So um, that's why people buy government bonds, because they know that they are going to get paid um, in, in pounds or dollars. Now, which brings me to the second way that people go, the governments renege on their money. Well, let's, let's leave that to the third. The third way is that... Um, or rather the second way now, the second's become the third, third become the second, um, is that they look at their outstanding liabilities and they say, um, we are not going to promise what we promised. So <clears throat> what happens is they put the retirement age up, say, from 50 to 55 to 60 to 65 to 70, 75, etc. And then they start putting down housing benefit and they start uh, breaking the triple lock on pensions and they start uh, uh, going from final salary to um, defined contribution pensions which are cheaper or they use the, um, the the consumer price index instead of the retail price index for uh, calculating uh, public sector pay increases um, in other words they just um, they just say I'm sorry your, your terms and conditions have got worse and and that again is is a high risk the first one you're high risk because all your creditors are going to go you know I mean you'd have trouble raising any more cash wouldn't you on the world financial stage if you decided to renege on all your bonds and <clears throat> secondly you'd be in trouble politically within the, the domestic arena if you decided to renege on all your commitments I mean supposing the uh, supposing the government turned around and said look sorry guys but We've had a rethink, and we're going to redesign the National Health Service to be to be a service for the um, 
for the under 16s and the over 80s and everyone else is you I'm sorry you know you're gonna have to take out health insurance I mean that would make the riots in uh, Trafalgar Square look uh, like uh, <laughs> like a minor minor fracas wouldn't it I mean there aren't enough policemen and enough horses to to deal with uh, the sort of backlash if they reneged on all the public benefits you know, from the entitlement society's benefits so that's really not much of a goer either so then that leaves you with um, the third way of getting out of debt which is to uh, inflate the debt away to make you know I was at with this this the bunch of people I was talking about the one who worked for the railway who earned 38 grand and I said to him I, I bought and I said to him look and this is gonna annoy you I said but I said some old twit did this to me so I'm gonna do it to you uh, and I said that when I bought my first house, I bought a four-bedroom, uh, semi-detached house for uh, £30,875, brand new, off-plan, in the Medway Towns, which is like, you know, it's quite a desirable place to live, a lot of employment, etc. But there was at the time, because the docks were open. And then, uh, and then I sold that years later, I said I sold that and um, bought my second house, which was a four bedroom detached house for £49,995. And they were looking at me like, oh, you know, really? Do you have to? <laughs> so, but, but my, the point I was making was that the value of those houses actually hasn't changed. That my first house has still got the same number of bedrooms, it's still got the same number of roofs, it's still watertight. It's still got the same, you know, it still keeps you heated in the winter. The actual value of the house in terms of houseness hasn't changed. All that's changed is that, that, that the money that I used, the purchasing power of that money, the, the, uh, the 32,000 pounds that I, that in those days would buy a house now uh, is, you know, is a year's wages. So what you do is you deflate the you deflate the um, the money. You get to the point where you're someone who works hard and puts a pound away towards their pension when they're young uh, finds when they retire that it's only worth five pence. And I think that's what Trump's uh, flagged that he's going to do. He's going to inflate. He's going to inflate the the pound the the, the dollar. You know he's going to. He's going to try as far as he can to render it worthless because then the Chinese get paid back with worthless dollars for their bonds. They realise that their bonds are junk, junk bonds. And uh, everyone who thinks that they're entitled to something in terms of the fiat currency um, finds that you know they are getting the pension that they thought, always thought that they were going to get, but it won't buy a sandwich. And in the meantime, <clears throat> the government's... <clears throat> had it away with all the, the the value because it's had the first dibs on spending the money that's created and he's planned to um cut tax for everyone and therefore like drastically cut government income uh, and at the same time not cut government spending and then therefore increase the deficit is 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 the biggest possible red flag you could have that the dollar is going to literally be worth nothing you know the, the dollar won't the dollar be worth well you know it's going to fall anyway it's going to fall so and uh, you know and the and, the, and probably the pound at the same time because all, all currencies are tied to the dollar they all are they all move they used to all move relative to gold but they all move now relative to the dollar and so the dollar's uh, the dollar goes down the pound will go up and then the pound will go down because we're we're they're printing literally two trillion pounds a day okay so the moral of the story is don't keep your assets in anything that's denominated in pounds all right buy things buy things not money i was going to talk about the association today wasn't i i have to do that monday anyway have a nice day talk to you next week bye